Coach Tedder from DRS Athletics, and this is DRS Strong Week 189. The focus of the week is exercise patience with a proactive, consistent mind. Just mind blown right now. But how do you get better at CrossFit? How do you get better at fitness, at exercising, at strength training, at running, at swimming, at pulling, at pushing, at everything that has to do with the fitness spectrum? How do you get good at that? Well, this is going to be a long one, so you better put your headphones on and plug it in because uh, I'm going to take some time to actually explain this, and it's not going to be my face. It's just going to be my audio. So check it out. All right, guys, I wanted to take some time to really go into detail on this topic because it keeps resurfacing around the fitness world, around the CrossFit world, and pretty much every coach and athlete has had this conversation at least once in their lifetime. And believe me, I get quite a bit of these questions all the time. And I was one of those as well that used to ask the questions all the time because it's just very normal to feel, hey, what do I need to do to get better at CrossFit? What do I need to do to get better at handstand push-ups or at pull-ups or at, you know, my Olympic lifting, my snatching does not feel good. Or even take it to a different step. What do I need to do to get better at my sport, at what I'm doing, at wrestling, at boxing? Maybe I'm doing pole vault. Maybe I'm doing soccer maybe i'm doing track and field or maybe i'm a swimmer i'm a water polo player you get the picture the thing is how do you get good at something and i'm gonna try and focus and really explain how how i think and i'm sure quite a bit of coaches think you get good at exercising and fitness this is going to be talking more into the fitness spectrum instead of something very specific because something very specific you have to train specifically for that to get better at that performance so here we go the metaphor i'm going to be using is basketball that's my background and i love basketball that was my first love well one of my first loves perhaps but everyone knows at least a little bit of basketball so the game of basketball and i want you to compare that to the game of fitness, right? The game of CrossFit or the game of fitness of just or just exercising in general. And honestly, you could apply this to anything that you want to become good at. I really, truly believe this. So it'll blow your mind. Just wait. Just wait. Okay. Everyone has free throws. When you're shooting free throws and you're really trying to get better at free throws, right? I just... A high percentage of free throws. Yes, you're going to practice that exact same motion of free throws and that exact same distance and routine over and over and over to really perfect that technique, to perfect the movement, or to try to perfect it and become permanent with the movement, right? Because practice makes permanent. It will not make perfect. It will make permanent. So what you practice is what you're going to be permanently good at or permanently bad at. So the free throws. Now, in order to continue past that plateau or that stagnancy of those free throws, you're going to have to practice your other shots and practice your stroke and practice your release through your fingers and, and the way you're holding the ball, the, the way you're, you're utilizing your, your eye and hand coordination and the, where you're looking and just really getting really good at all the other different components of that. Now, if you really go into comparing that with something in fitness, let's just say pull-ups, because we all want pull-ups and we want to get better at pull-ups. Push-ups might come a bit easier for people. So if you want to get good at pull-ups, how do you get good at pull-ups? Do you just do pull-ups? Absolutely, because that'll help. But there are a lot of different components of that movement, just like a free throw, that you're going to need to spend time and exercise the patience with the proactive consistency mind. <gasps> this is where the focus of the week comes in, right? 
is exercising patience through a movement that you're not very comfortable or good at and becoming better and better. So the components of a pull-up could be, all right, well, how is my core? Is it strong? Is it engaged? Or I'm just really trying to throw myself up on that bar to get my chin over the bar, right? Now, are my shoulders healthy enough to rotate or pull or do any type of movement that needs to happen in order for me to lift my body higher? Well, that's a component of that itself. Or are my legs doing their job and staying engaged instead of just having two dead weights underneath you that try to pull up? Um, also, are, is your grip strong enough where you're actually holding on to the bar long enough for you to be able to stay on the bar long and do more pull-ups? Now, those are only a few components that go into that. Now, when we get too fixated on that exact same movement over and over, you know, you take away some energy and attention to other things that might help make those better. So let's go back to the basketball metaphor. Okay, great. I'm getting better at my, at my free throws, but I'm so fixated that everything else is kind of not picking up. Now, if I was to focus on getting better at my layups, right, my layups and the finesse of a layup or finishing a layup. Now, if I'm dunking, it's a whole different story. I'm about to go and dunk that and get better at that too. But layups, you know, maybe some bank shots because that, that'll work my finesse on finishing. Uh, maybe some three-pointers to work my range and, and just change the range of my, of my shot. Now, that's just on the court, but off the court, I'm probably be working on my leg strength, you know, some strength training, some balance, some core, some, some mental and psychological exercises to help me calm down so I'm not, I'm not super nervous when I'm about to go in the free throw line and everyone's like booing or everyone's cheering or everyone's super quiet. So that plays a whole other component into my performance in just that free throw. So doing everything else around it's going to help you know sleeping better so that my focus stays there eating better and and having those extra fueling things is going to help my free throw you might not think it does but it really does you know a lot of people think that is just that one thing but it, it's a lot of other little tiny little things that make the bigger picture and within that big picture there's always the bigger bigger picture the biggest picture right, which would be the entire basketball game. And in terms of your fitness, it wouldn't be just the pull-up, but it'd be good and fit enough to be able to do not just that one movement, but do other kind of movements like handstand push-up, like run, swim, lift, you know, climb a rope, do handstand push-ups. I think I already said that, but I like those a lot, <laughs> and box jumps, and running, and sprinting, and forward rolls, and you know, being able to be fit, it's a bigger picture for that. And if you take it to the biggest picture, well, what am I really training for? The purpose always goes back to that. If the purpose is to be better at running, you know, marathon, or is it to be better at golf, or is it to be better at basketball, <laughs> or track, or pole vault, or softball, or baseball, whatever it is, it'll always go back to the bigger picture and what the purpose of what you're doing, what you're doing. Now, some of you guys are to the point where you just want to be fit and be good at being fit and be good at exercising and feeling good and looking good. And so that's a whole different purpose behind your training and behind what you do behind closed doors where no one's watching, when no one's yelling at you to go faster or where someone is encouraging you to continue because you're tired. That's going to be on you to do what you need to do to get better. Now let's talk about the sport of fitness because now it has become a sport and that is CrossFit. To get good at CrossFit, first of all, it takes time. If you never had any previous sport training, or fitness training or exercise, it's gonna take time. And obviously genetics, but it's gonna take time for you to build what you haven't built in the past. There's no foundation, so you have to have some type of foundation. That's number one, your training age. How long have you been an athlete or how long have you been training? Now, if you've never done CrossFit, but you've done other sports, 
you're training age on those sports, you have some history behind, so your your muscles and things like that know at least few of the movements or, or know what how to adapt to certain things or exercises. And so it'll remember that, right? That's your muscle memory. So first of all, that's where the focus of the week comes in and exercising patience. Okay, I'm gonna exercise my patience because I can't eat the whole cake and just eat the whole cake the next day and then be really good and continue and do that. That doesn't happen that way, it takes time. So that's you exercising patience. But how do you exercise patience by being proactive consistently and by having a proactive consistently mind. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but it's just being proactive in what you're trying to accomplish without losing patience and being consistent about it, which becomes discipline. And when you're disciplined, your mind and your body becomes disciplined. If you want everything right at this moment, you know, everything has to be done or you have to get everything done now, that's not really exercising patience and that's really going to be just short term. The expectation has gone way too far out of hand for a lot of our younger athletes, for a lot of our, our people in this generation that I expect to have this here. If I'm working so hard and I'm really giving myself the best nutrition, all the, why don't I have that? Or why can I be the best now? There's no correlation that says because you do something so good right now and you are putting in all your effort right now, you're going to get good right now. That has never been the case. It's very, very rare cases that happens. So instead of asking yourself and being frustrated into there's how come I'm doing this and then they're getting this? Or how come I'm doing this and Reach Fronin did that? I'm doing 10 workouts a day and I'm still not at the regionals or at the CrossFit games or even just minimize that and I'm not the best one in my gym. Why? Well, it takes time, first of all. Second of all, it takes patience, right? But mostly it takes a humble mind but a proactive mind of just consistent work. Just put a little grain every single time you come in, not just to this gym, but whoever else is listening. If you're listening out there, whatever you want to get good at or get better at, continue to put in time day by day. Just head down and get to work. Don't excuse yourself. Don't excuse your behavior. Just keep working. Just humble work. Psh and you're gonna turn back and be like, wow, I have put in so much work and I have gotten so much better. Now the only way is up, the only way is forward. And when there's setbacks, instead of being frustrated about your setbacks, you could really take the time to reset and be like, okay, this is my journey, this is what I want, continue pushing forward. We all get caught up in looking up are heroes, right? Whoever we look up to. In terms of the fitness world, it could be Reach Fronin, it could be anybody of a top athlete. I love Samantha Briggs, by the way, she's freaking legit. But we just look up at all these people that are super jacked, super fit, and they're doing all these crazy different things and drinking all these different supplements and doing all these thousand workouts a day and playing with their dogs while they're working now. And I mean, all that is awesome. But what goes behind doors is what makes them who they are now. Every single person in there had to put in their time and put in their work to get where they are. And we cannot compare ourselves to any of those people because we are not any of those people, we are ourselves. And again, our training age might, might have difference, our genetics might have a difference on that. We just might be born in a different era. We might be 10 years older, we might be 10 years younger. So comparing could, could be a tricky game, but use, utilizing that as a motivation or inspiration, for sure. That, that's a great thing because I look up to a lot of people and it's amazing. And I think 
their hard work and, and their consistencies will get some there. And their humbleness. That is one thing. If you're not humble and you're really good, I don't know if I really like you. <laughs> but that's a different topic. Uh, so let me put a, uh, an example of Matt Fraser or Rich Fronin, right? If you know CrossFit, you know those two. And, and they've been the fittest in the last five, six years. So what they do, everyone starts wanting to do the same and it just doesn't work that way because rich running works out three to four times a day maybe six times doesn't mean that if you do the same it's going to work now going back to the metaphor on basketball when you're shooting free throws or when you're just working on your on your stroke on your shooting right your energy expenditure is not really high and your intensity is pretty calm very calm now, if I was to go and play a full-on game every single day, my energy expenditure and my intensity would be super high where my recovery would need a lot of that because I would be pretty, pretty tired. Not just physically, but my CNS, my mental brain capacity would be pretty low, pretty shot. So if you go back to CrossFit and Rich Fronin and Matt Fraser and all those people, they don't work that hard they don't they're not on their backs every single day after workout because they wouldn't be able to last they're not doing a crossfit game workout every single day that would be poor programming and that would be something that it wouldn't last they would get injured and they wouldn't be able to do as many workouts so even though they might be doing three to five workouts few of those and quite a bit of those are a very low intensity and very low percentage so that they where they are actually working on quote unquote their stroke their free throw right aka their thruster movement their pull-ups their handstand work they're not killing themselves every single workout because there's no way you're able to keep that up no matter who you are no matter what your genetics are you're going to venture wear down so remember the other thing on this is not just timing but working on mechanics and movement, I cannot emphasize that enough because that's gonna give you the longevity, the efficiency, and it's gonna allow for your work capacity to kick in. Once you become in shape, but you're still moving crappy, your work capacity is gonna plateau at one point. And what is work capacity? It's being able to do work for long periods of time and repeat that same intensity over long periods of time just over and over like a workhorse without slowing down, without freaking getting sloppy. But if you never work on your movement or mechanics, then your work capacity is gonna stall and that's all you're gonna be able to get to. So on other, you know, we always explain the focus and the stimulus of the workout in the programming at DRS because it's such a huge importance in terms of longevity, in terms of injury, risk and in terms of everyone wants to get better we all want to get better and we're going to give you the tools to get better but you got to follow what those tools are and got to utilize those tools so you can get better so when he says you know cruise around this and then hit it hard then you do that when he says i need you to get after it and you know sprint that 400 sprint that 200 then you also get after it but remember you only are following that if your purpose is to do that. You might come in here, you just wanna have fun and a nice little workout and sweat, that's fine too. No one's gonna judge that you wanna do that. And no one's gonna judge that someone wants to be the best they could be, right? So that's the awesome part about this program that it goes across the boards and it goes into whatever you want to take away from. If you want it to be extremely, really hard, then you got to pick up the intensity and you're going to be on your back, right? Because you're going after it, just like you would get after that fourth quarter freaking championship game. You would get after it. Now, if that's not what you would like out of that workout or you don't think you feel up to for that workout, then that's fine. You're going to dial back. But just remember, don't expect, don't expect to get really good at something if you are not putting in what needs to be done, including time. 
time under tension, time under your belt, experience, and patience, consistency, and being proactive. Guys, I hope I covered tons of different answers and I hope I gave you a metaphor where you can see the difference in intensity and stimulus and focus and that takes maturity for yourself and for the coaches and for anyone that wants to help to make you better. Just be patient, be proactive, be consistent and just know that there's a plan behind everything. So ask questions, be involved, be passionate, be consistent and get after it. Booyah!